Hello everyone and welcome to a very exciting game from the 1971 uh, Moscow Tournament. It's basically the Alyehin Memorial Tournament, the 15th edition of Alyehin Memorial Tournament. It's uh, Anatoly Karpov versus uh, Vlastimil Hort and it's uh, one of the strongest tournaments held uh, at, at that point. Uh, 18 of the strongest grandmasters, uh, minus some of them, like uh, we didn't have Bobby Fischer there even though uh, he was at the peak of his power, it's 1971, but he's busy uh, playing the, the candidate tournaments. So here uh, everyone is here, Boris Paski is here, Tal is here, uh, Hort is here, Anatoly Karpov is here, uh, Tigran Petrosian is here, uh, Smyslov is here, so a, a lot of very strong players. Uh, and uh, Karpov is, uh, well, maybe not the lowest rated, but among the lowest rated here. He's about 20, 25, 60. Uh, ELO rated and he's 19 years old at the time maybe 20 so uh, this is one of the games I decided to show you while we're waiting for the next big saga to begin while you are all busy casting your votes and uh, uh, well I believe tomorrow is the uh, Tata Steel India edition uh, so we're also going to be covering that but that being said uh, let's check out the game and I do have some very important uh, announcements uh, but we're going to save that for the end of the video and it's uh, regarding the uh, the stream on Saturday where we're going to have a nice leeches tournament and some uh, some fun and games so stay tuned. Now getting back to the game Karpov with the white pieces opens with e4. Uh, Hort replies with c5 we have the Sicilian defense knight to f3 d6 and now d4. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, we have c captures on d4, knight captures on d4, and the knight to f6. We have knight to c3, and now uh, e6, the, the, the Savening uh, variation of the Sicilian. No idea if I pronounced that uh, correctly. Never actually knew how, how do you pronounce that. I always thought it was Shevening, and then I heard it was uh, Savening. Uh, so it could, could be anything. If any of you do have a precise way to do it, do share in the comments below. And here, g4. Uh, it was very popular at the time. It's very popular today, the Keras attack against the Sheveninga. Uh, you want to uh, expand all the way to g5, push the knight back, then continue with f4, h4 if, if possible. Uh, we have knight to c6 by Hort, and now g5. Pushing the knight back, we have knight to d7, and now f4. Uh, we have a6, uh, taking away the b5 square from Karpov's knights. Bishop to e3, Karpov continues development, and bishop to e7. And here, rook to g1, saying that castling uh, kingside uh, would be a bit too mature. h4, h5 is coming, so not uh, not a problem for Karpov. Even though uh, the engine will give you that, it's, it's okay to castle here, but uh, you know, in those days, in the pre-engine era, no one was this brave. So here... Uh, uh, Hort finds a way how to trade off some of the pieces and activate his pieces. He goes knight captures on d4, we have queen captures on d4, and now e5. Uh, either saying you mess up your pawn structure or push uh, go back with the queen. So Karpov goes back, queen d2, we have pawn captures on f4, bishop captures, and now knight to e5, getting this knight into the game. Uh, and if knight is captured, then everything just gets traded off, which favors black. And if not, you just have a very strong knight on e5. So here Karpov goes, uh, and also there's the, there's the threat of knight f3 check just picking up the queen as it would fork, uh, fork the uh, king and queen, so bishop to e2. And now, uh, and also this is a move 14 and this position has never been repeated again. We should, we should uh, just, uh, you know, s state that. Bishop to e6 by Hort and now knight to d5. Karpov also grabs uh, an excellent square for his knight. Hort Im uh, eliminates it immediately with bishop captures on d5, e captures, and now knight to g6, pushing the bishop back. You, you cannot go to g3 as you will lose the g5 pawn. Uh, you have to go to e3 to keep an eye on the pawn here. Uh, with h6, challenging the, the g5 pawn and here uh, Karpov is not afraid of bishop to h4 check. He, he will gladly grab this pawn. Karpov picks up the pawn with g captures on h6. Bishop to h4 check and now Karpov just uh, goes back. King to d1. He will not be able to castle but he has some ideas of playing c3, king c2 and then castling artificially. Uh, we have g captures on h6, bishop captures on h6, so Karpov is up a pawn for the moment, and now bishop back to f6, attacking the b2 pawn here, so Karpov uh, defends it, c3, now with ideas of playing king to c2 and bringing the other rook into the game. Uh, and here, bishop to e5, uh, bishop to e5 uh, attacking the h2 pawn, but the real threat is just queen to h4, just with a double attack on the pawn and on the, uh, the bishop here. So you could try a lot of things here. King c2 is an idea. If you try bishop to g5, it's also possible. 
uh, if bishop to g5, uh, yes, you prevent queen to h4, but then the queen moves, but now you've allowed the rook to have the semi-open h-file, and Karpov doesn't want uh, to allow his opponent uh, any moves. So here, uh, you can try to pause the video and try to find a really nice Karpovian move. Uh, well, like, uh, pause the video, well, you pause the video, but I will give you a couple of seconds. So for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding such a such a nice Karpovian move. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's rook to g4. It's a, it's a wonderful rook lift, prevents queen to h4, doesn't move the bishop, so the rook is still stuck there on h8, no real prospect for this rook, at least for now. And you can always shift it over to the queen side to start an attack if black manages the castle queen side. So it's a really a wonderful move. And black should uh, definitely think twice before grabbing the h2 pawn, because here... Yes, you grab your pawn back, but now white has all the time in the world to get the king to safety, the rook into the game. Even if you go bishop back to e5, rook to f1 is coming. And now queen to d7, you prepare castling, just king to b1 is sufficient. And if queen side castle, then you can shift the rook over to the queen side. And the material is equal, but white has a, a much better position. Since the king is not all that safe here, you cannot go king b8 because bishop captures an a6. And the white already has some ideas of queen e3, maybe queen can come to a7. The uh, black, white is the one who has the bishop pair, so definitely a much better position for white. So here, instead of grabbing the pawn, queen to f6 by Hort, uh, and now h4, grabbing more space on the king side. Uh, and also preventing uh, castle's queen side, because if this just bishop g5 wins material for Karpov. So after h4 we have queen to f5, but now another uh, excellent move by Karpov, rook to b4. Again, attacking the b7 pawn and preventing uh, the, the defense of the pawn by castling, because now bishop g4 uh, just wins the queen, since uh, the rook from, from b4 still guards the g4 square. So Karpov says you are still not uh, not castling anywhere. And if b5 preventing, uh, preventing uh, well, just rook captures on b7, then just a4 and you're busting open on the, on the queen side. Again, white will just be much better here. So after rook b4, just bishop to f6 by, uh, by Hort going after the h4 pawn. And now h5, sorry, h5, pushing the knight back, we have knight to e7, and now that the knight no longer controls the f4 square, Karpov moves the rook back, rook to f4, Pu uh, attacking the queen, and if the queen moves, uh, well, the bishop could fall, so the queen has to keep an eye on the bishop, queen to e5, and now rook back to f3. Again, saying, uh, what do you want to do? Uh, I have bishop to f4 planned, which could be which could be uh, very exciting. For example, if you castle queen side, I'm going to go bishop to f4. And now you have, uh, well, you, you could either trade here, which is not something, uh, which is not all that great. Or you could go queen captures on h5 if you want to win your pawn back. So it's... Uh, Really, really a tough, tough situation. For example, if queen captures on d5, you will just get queen captures, knight captures, and when the knight bishop goes back, you don't want to trade it, of course. Now you have problems here. You cannot, uh, you cannot pick up the pawn here because of c4. If c4, you eliminate the defender of, well, not eliminate, but you move the defender of the bishop on f6, so you just lose a piece. And if you don't want to allow c4, for example, if you go b5, then just h6, and now Karpov has a, a monster passed pawn. Uh, the, the, the resulting endgame would be winning for Karpov. So here, after rook to f3, uh, we don't have castles, uh, e even though it, it is a possibility, I guess. Here we have knight captures on d5. This is the move uh, Hort uh, goes for, and Karpov just goes rook to d3. Now puts pressure on the knight here, and if you move the knight also, the d6 pawn will be pressured. So here, if you move the knight, uh, then again, just bishop to f4 puts a lot of pressure here. Queen to e4, now even bishop to f3 is a possibility. You're going to lose this pawn, you're going to lose this pawn. And, uh, well, your rooks are still doing nothing. The knight is really poorly placed on e7. It Again, Karpov would just have a much, much better position. So here, after rook to d3, we have rook captures on h6 by Hort. It is the, the strongest move. Uh, and rook captures on d5, uh, attacking the queen. We have queen to e4. And and now uh, Karpov has to decide what to do. Does he capture the rook on h6? Does he capture the pawn on d6? So all of these are very interesting ideas. For example, if rook captures, you're going to lose the rook on d5 with check. Now if you move the king, uh, you're going to suffer a few checks. King checks. Uh, sorry, queen e4 check. You're going to go bishop d3. Check here, b3. And now black will uh, 
well, go, of course, go here to defend the bishop, but also uh, now you've uh, created a lot of holes here around the white king, and it's hard to say if white will be able to push this uh, ad push his advantage uh, all the way to a win because the the white king will also uh, be under attack at at at, uh, at some point. Uh, so after this queen to e4 move, Karpov doesn't like rook, uh, queen captures rook. What about uh, rook captures on d6? It's it almost it's almost a good move, but here Hort prepared Bishop captures on c3, a very sneaky idea, uh, where you don't really have a lot of good options. For example, uh, you could go B captures on c3, uh, but then you just go Rook captures on d6, Queen captures, and the Rook d8 traps Karpov's Queen. So here Karpov just loses. Uh, so after Bishop captures on c3, you would have to go for Queen captures on h6. Here uh, you would be uh, you would be up a Rook as as White, but it doesn't matter. Bishop to e5. And uh, white is just in a in a very bad situation. Now you're threatening to pick up the rook and again uh, win the queen with rook d8. So after the rook moves back, uh, now you go rook to c8. And here, even though you're down a rook, uh, queen to h1 is enough uh, to, to compensate for the rook. Uh, there is just no good way of defending against queen to h1. Uh, it would just be it would just be terrible. And the rook controls the entire uh, c file here. So you could try bishop d3, but still queen h1 check. King e2, you're gonna go queen g2 check. And now if you go back, white, black just repeats. And if you try to go forward, uh, queen g3 check. Now you have to go back because if you go forward now, now you, you get made it. Queen g4 check. Uh, let's say king captures here. Rook c5 check. You're gonna go uh, king to f6. And now, of course, uh, queen to d4 will be mate uh, since the pawn covers the g6 and the e6 pawn. So uh, queen captures rook, not not all that great. Rook captures pawn allows the sneaky bishop captures on c3. Uh, rook sacrifice. So here Karpov just goes back. Rook to d3. And now he also allows his king to finally reach the c2 square because the rook blocks the queen's attack to the c2 square and is preparing to bring the other rook into the game. So here uh, we have queen to h1 check where if you trade queens, uh, okay, if, if you block with the queen, this is just uh, not all that great. King e7, the rook is coming into the game and black has a very, very, very nice game. Even though white has the, the best h1, but it's bishops of opposite colors, it's hard to hard to imagine you will be able to, to do anything about that. So after king, uh, queen to h1 check, you cannot block with the bishop, uh, otherwise you lose a piece. King to c2, this, this becomes possible because the rook on h6 is still undefended. So you have to capture the rook. If you don't capture the rook, uh, just queen captures rook and you are down the rook. So here a horde captures the rook. We have queen captures on h6 by Karpov. Uh, and now bishop to e5. Uh, the bishop is under attack and you also have to keep an eye on the h8 square with the bishop. Uh, so, so to not allow queen h8 to check and um, the winning of the rook on a8. Uh, king e7 does seem to prevent both ideas but then rook f3 is just super strong again there's the threat you cannot defend it after bishop e5 you're gonna go queen g5 check and now everything just wins regardless of what black plays if f6 you just win the the seventh rank check king here queen captures here and now all of the squares around the black king are covered rook covers f5 bishop c4 is coming you're you're just a dead loss here so here, after queen to h6, uh, we have bishop to e5, still keeping an eye on this uh, h8 square, but Karpov just played queen to g5, and, uh, well, it was in this position that uh, Vlastimil Hort uh, decided to resign the game, because there's just not all that much uh, he can do. Uh, he can't really move the king anywhere if you, if you try something like king to d7 to get... Uh, to get, you cannot castle, of course, the queen is covering the d8 square, uh, you cannot go king to d7 because just queen captures here, the, the d pawn will be pinned, so here you don't really have a good move, it's, it's just a, a terrible position for, for black, and also, you know, just uh, as a bonus, Karpov has a past h pawn that's ready to be pushed, so uh, there, there's also that, and here you don't really, you don't really have anything to, to go to go on. Also, the threat is queen to g8 check, just picking up the rook, so not a lot of moves here. If king h, if king f8, you just uh, continue pushing the pass pawn, and it's just uh, a pointless to continue playing this with black. Uh, bishop to f3 also is a possibility you're gonna go after this pawn also you can just put it here to, to, to guard the h7 pawn then go queen to g8 it's just whatever black plays loses so yeah uh, after queen to g5 hort resigned the game and uh, an excellent victory for anatoly karpov I, I maybe forgot to mention but hort was higher rated than karpov here hort was around 2600 
and something little and the carpool was around 25 25 40 uh, whereas Boris Paski who also played the tournament was 26 90 almost 2700 but here now I give you the final standings of this tournament which will uh, well may come to you as a surprise but also it may not come to you as a surprise here are the final standings of the tournament as you can see uh, Anatoly Karpov won this tournament uh, with 11 out of 17 well it's a tied tied first with Leonid Stein uh, but still a, a remarkable performance when you consider who also participated there you have it uh, Anatoly Karpov, Leonid Stein, Vasily Smyslov then you have Tukmanov, uh, Petrosian, Mikhail Tal uh, with 9.5 out of 17 Tal uh, uh, tied with Boris Paskin, 9.5 out of 17 Robert Byrne, uh, Vlastimil Hort, then David Bronstein, Viktor Korchnoi, just uh, a lot of very strong, very strong grandmasters. And as you can see, even though this is basically the era where Boris Paski is the world champion and Fischer is, uh, you know, uh, defeating all of the candidates to, to fight Paski, it is actually Karpov who is who is uh, dominating the the scene. You know, for example, in in Alejin's memorial here, just. Uh, uh, five wins, zero losses, and 12 draws. So, okay, uh, a lot of people have zero losses. Stein has zero losses, Smyslov has zero losses, and Tukmanov has zero losses. Uh, but still, uh, uh, an impressive uh, performance by Anatoly Karpov. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Also, I wanted to show you a bit more uh, about Karpov in his younger days. It's just He was just a, just a monster. Uh, so maybe maybe some of you uh, also will be interested in, in voting for Karpov in the in our poll that will decide on the next big saga, which you will find in the description below if you still haven't voted. Uh, also, now the uh, the announcement I wanted to make the the stream for the for celebrating the 500,000 subscribers uh, will happen on Saturday, and all of the the info will be in the description below. We will have a two-hour Leeches tournament as we usually do. Then we're gonna uh, have some games against subscribers. Uh, I will be joined by Jan almighty uh, and uh, well some other uh, surprise guests so i do hope you enjoyed that as well uh, we're gonna have a, a picking of the winners of the mikhail tal uh, video where you all of you wrote some, wrote some nice comments and wrote hashtag tal uh, as usual the rewards will be uh, 10 uh, 10 amazon gift cards and nine of, nine of them will be valued at 25 dollars and uh, the the main one will be 250 dollars as a uh, the, the greatest uh, Amazon prize uh, where you can, you know, buy yourself a nice book or as usual, a Bobby Fischer action figure. So that being said, uh, all, all of the, the, the script, uh, well, all of the info will be in the description below. And also a link to the Leeches tournament is already available, so you can already join it. Uh, also uh, will be the second link in the description below. The first one will take you to a poll where you can vote on the next big saga. So that's it with the announcement. More, uh, more information soon. So yeah, uh, I would like to thank Ignacio Raul Freiberg, uh, uh, Gregoire uh, Sherlin, and uh, Fakhrudin Jinic for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to checking up on your wonderful suggestions. Uh, tomorrow we start with the Tata Steel India edition, and, uh, well, just whatever else happens uh, in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.